Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies, and we're going to continue our Canadian horror movie theme. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Well, after spending some time in the trauma ward, finally got you to drink a moose head. Guess it's not that bad, but <laughs> it is fitting for a Canadian review. Yeah, worth almost killing me for. No! Today's episode is a Patreon request, and it's requested by Dave Vanderhoff. You can follow him on Instagram as Horror Movie and a Beer, which we will salute <laughs> anyone right. who likes horror movies and beer. We will be talking about 1986's Killer Party. This is directed by William Fruit, and he's directed another Canadian horror film, which we will be covering, called The House by the Lake, or also Death Weekend. Barney Cohen wrote this, actually, and he did uh, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. And he also created Forever Night. Shitty <laughs> Canadian <laughs> vampire show about some vampire cop or something like that. Yes. I, guess, I remember it being on and being kind of tacky. Ralph Seymour is in this. He was in Ghoulies, just to mention one movie, amongst tons of stuff that he was in. Killer Party starts off, we see this family at a funeral home. They're kind of mourning the casket. And yeah. They're about to leave, and one woman goes back in. She wants to say her last goodbyes, and she starts really giving it to this corpse. <laughs> I hate you, you bitch! And then the casket kind of starts rumbling and opens and pulls this woman into the casket. Great shot where her like, foot gets yanked in and just a shoe drops. Pushed through into the uh, crematorium. Those guys wearing the headphones, yeah. they can't hear yeah. anything. And But they also, the casket's all rumbling. <laughs> yeah, like, they don't <laughs> care, they just put it through. <laughs> it then shows a shot of a couple in a drive-in and this is just a movie they're watching. I'm like, oh man, I want to keep watching this movie. Yeah. It seems pretty cool. The girl goes to the concession stand. It's completely empty. There's nobody in there. He goes back to the car. The boyfriend isn't there. He comes from the outside and he's like a zombie chasing her back into the concession stand. And there's some band there and they <laughs> start playing the sick April Fool's song. That keyboard guy. <laughs> Then this turns out to be a music video that somebody else is watching Yeah, now. yeah, it's like, oh man, it just blew my mind. Yeah. Now we're into the real world of the movie. We're introduced to three girls, Vivia, Jennifer, and Phoebe, who all want to join a sorority, and they got to go through the whole pledging process. Yeah, all that hazing yeah. shit. And to make things even worse, this is all taking place in and around and on April Fool's Day. And they want to do all the hazing and the pledging in this old abandoned sorority house which has been boarded up for years because there was hazing that went horribly wrong years ago where a kid died. He's actually buried like behind the sorority house. Did this kid have any other family? Yeah. Like, he <laughs> no, wanted to take the kid away? No family plot or anything? <laughs> Just bury him behind the sorority house? The sorority mother kind of knows they're going to be doing this hazing. He's all talking to that tombstone. So she's talking to, oh, you know, they want to use the house. And so she goes to go kind of fix up the sorority house a bit. You see this hand come up with this hammer, and it's just her. Just <laughs> you, you think it's gonna be someone killing her, but then someone else comes behind her with a hazing paddle, and boom! So we get to know some of these characters, and you see all these kids playing pranks on each other. So it's time for these girls to do their sorority pledge, and they go to the old abandoned house, and they got candles, they make them do all these stupid things, breaking raw eggs going into their mouths. They gotta keep it there for a period of time and spit it in his brandy <laughs> glass and eating those goats eyes yeah, and stupid everything. shit all paddling. They start doing the paddling. As the paddling starts, all the lights start to flicker. The furniture starts to move and rock and glass is falling over. Smoke starts coming out of the basement door. Vivia wants to go explore and they're all, no, don't. So she goes down there and She's down there for a long time and go down together to see what she's been up to. And she's strapped into this guillotine. <laughs> yeah. Guillotine comes down, her head comes right the fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Rolls down the stairs to the set of feet, picks up the head. Well, it's her. She, yeah. she pulled a prank on everybody. The head of the sorority house is like royally pissed off by this, but intrigued too on top of it. And they ended up letting all three girls into the sorority. They do let Vivia in solely because of this prank, and they want Vivia to recreate the prank during the April Fool's party that they're gonna have at that abandoned house. 
the teachers get kind of wise that a party's gonna be happening. So there's this one professor, Professor Zito, starts casing out the house a little bit, goes into the basement, and you see the blade for the guillotine come down and then go back up. All of a sudden he turns around, he's like, hey, what are you doing here? And he gets all electrocuted. You know, his, his bare wires all get shoved in his face. So the big party's on at the sorority house. Everyone's got super 80s costumes. Yeah. It's like a costume party. Yeah, you got the 80s music going. Everybody's kind of dancing, having yeah. a good time. Bottles on the mantle start exploding and all this stuff starts happening. And all of a sudden, Jennifer gets dragged into the basement. You see her face too, her eyes roll into the back of her head and she starts getting all kind of creepy looking. Meanwhile, the guys start getting kind of pissed off. Some of them want to go help Jennifer, others don't, and they start fighting, and one of them stabs the other. April Fool, it was all That's a great a big prank. prank, right? That's a boner. That's a boner. <laughs> That's your boner. So the party's starting to wind down, but there's a few people lingering. And one of the girls is just getting her coat, getting ready to leave. And she's approached by somebody in one of those old diving suits. <laughs> I like how it even has the weights on it. It, weigh <laughs> yeah. you down. it went all out. This person's got a trident. Please, no more pranks. You know, I've had <laughs> enough. Boom! Right through the stomach with it. The party's going on. This killer's gonna be loose. He's still on the still loose. Still on the loose! Still on the loose! He's still, he's still on the loose! And that's where we're gonna end the plot. Because if you want to see what happens with the rest of Killer Party, man, I'm gonna tell ya, it gets crazy. So, why should you watch Killer Party? Well, first of all, the amount of misdirection in this movie is insane. <laughs> it starts off with the movie within a music video within a movie. All about playing pranks and April Fools and the movie is playing pranks on you before you even get into the major plot of the movie. Yeah, it's so rare. Yeah. And it's done so well. In the misdirection with like who the killer might be, you always see these feet, yeah, shoes, scratching at the ankles, shoes approaching. There's always these POV shots, but 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 who's POV? That old woman gets killed. You see the hammer come up, and like, ah, uh, she's gonna get killed. And it, no, it's her. Yeah, and it's like there's lots of misdirection like that. It really helps the mystery of the movie. Some of the kills too, like you think somebody's gonna die one way, and they die a completely different way. It's yeah. like, oh fuck, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, you like, expect oh, that teacher to be put in the guillotine but he just gets electrocuted yeah <laughs> i was thinking like oh man like they don't show many kills they all cut before any gore really happens it was not intentional they had to cut it to make the rating mm -hmm. so they did film and stuff with good effects and good gore but they had to ditch it because they'll open up the fridge and then you see this and it yeah. cuts like right it's like oh man i want to see the hand come right off yeah blood and yeah. everything you know and the characters for this movie are super great. All memorable. Individual. And individuals, yes. Yeah, like you remember each one. And they all have their own little quirks about them. And they're not cliches either. Yeah, they can easily be yeah. in an 80s movie. Maybe that Martin character is a little bit of a cliche, awkward kind of guy. He gets the lady at the end, you know? <laughs> yeah. He, he does get one of them, you know, he, he goes after one, doesn't get her, but he goes after the second one, and gets her. You think he'd be a nerd and kind of beat up or picked on? He doesn't really get picked on no. that much in the movie. No, he's, he's just, just awkward. Yeah, he's just awkward and yeah. just sort of a normal dude. What do you want me to do? I didn't know I'd have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You, you very rarely do. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a low budget Canadian movie. The acting is really good. There's not one phoned in bad performance. And for a bunch of unknown actors, like all the girls pretty much unknown, haven't done much before or since. They're solid. You, yeah. you completely believe them. The production value does not feel yeah. low budget no. or Canadian for that matter too, right? It has the same vibe as uh, Prom Night 2. That same look, that same kind of production value, which again doesn't look Canadian. And this movie was supposed to actually be called April Fools. But because it was done in 83 and then shelved for three years, April Fool's Day took the name, right? Yep. So then they couldn't call it that. So they had to call it Killer Party, which is actually a pretty good title anyways. Yeah. It's yeah. good enough. And it works for the yeah. movie. April Fool's Day is a better title for April Fool's Day. Yeah. Killer Party is a 
good title for this movie. Exactly. So I, I think it worked. The writing in this movie is great. The dialogue is not hokey. It's funny when it's supposed to be funny. It's not funny because it's bad or <laughs> horrible. It's believable. You believe that these kids are interacting and having fun with each other. The music for this movie is fucking great. Super 80s. Super 80s. <laughs> it's perfect. And the, the songs in there are kind of funny too. There's that one song, These are the best days. The movie ends all bleak and everything. And then that <laughs> happy song plays, These are the best days. So you can tell they're kind of taking the piss of it. Yeah, right? yeah. They knew what they were yeah. doing. And the twists in this movie, especially at the end, where you expect it to be like a killer. It goes completely left field. It yeah. is like, Whoa! The shit hits the fan at the end, and it's quite the finale. The whole sorority house is all falling apart, and stairs are crumbling. It's complete madness, and it's pulled off very well. Like, the production on that last act is great. And then the last act is over, and there's another twist at the end, <laughs> yeah, which, exactly. is, which is great. You're always put on the edge of your seat with this movie, yeah. too, you know? Yeah. It's like something happens, and you're like, okay, well, that's over. Oh, no, wait, it's not over. There's something else. Like, whoa, holy fuck. And the characters keep developing yeah. from that, exactly. too, right? Yeah. The movie keeps yeah. going. Abandoned sorority house is a great setting for a movie. They decorate it up for the party, so it's still kind of run down, but now it's all colorful and lit up. It's kind of neat how they use the same place, but it, it's got two different looks to it. Right, yeah. Depending keep, on what point in the movie you're in. They keep things fresh, right? Yeah. Give me an 80s party any yeah. day. That fridge, okay, a leopard print fridge? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, fuck. Man, I'd love something like that. That'd be awesome. There were a couple of things about this movie we did have a little bit of issue with, and mostly it was the pacing, where they could have spent their time on better things. Like, it took a little bit too long to get to the big party at the end, and they also could have spent more time explaining why all this is happening. So they probably could have, like, ditched a couple of scenes and expanded the party. I also wish they would have went more into the possession and the occult side of things. They only touch on it in like one sentence. Other than that, it's a super fun movie. And even though there's not kills happening right away and plentiful until yeah. in the end, you're still enjoying the movie. Yeah, the characters keep you going and you're always wanting more. Yeah, so if you want a good 80s slasher that's kind of half horror, half comedy, and does both pretty damn good, yep. check out 1986's Killer Party. <laughs> and until next time, keep drinking, Moosehead. Uh... <laughs>